Hi everybody, welcome back. Now today we're going to be discussing power inverters. I briefly touched upon the subject in our solar panel setup that we have in our caravan. If you haven't seen that video, click up here and go and have a look at it right now. We're going to be discussing today what power inverters actually are, how they work, why you might need one, and a few points to look out for when you want to go and purchase one yourself. So let's just jump straight into it and let's start off with what is a power inverter. So in principle, a power inverter is an incredibly simple thing. It's a box of electronics which provides you a mains voltage from a low voltage source. So here in the UK, we connect an inverter to a 12 volt battery and out the other side, it gives us 230 volts. It also needs to change the type of electricity it generates as well. You see around the house, we've got an electrical supply called AC or alternating current. And on batteries, including car batteries, leisure batteries and AA batteries, it creates an electrical current called DC or direct current. Now I've got a graph and a pretty picture here to show you the difference between the two types of electrical current. So this graph is not to scale, but you can clearly see it shows you what is going on. The graph has voltage up the side, so the higher the voltage, the higher the line, etc. And across the bottom, we have time. So DC, or direct current, is a straight line. For as long as there's 12 volts in the system, the line will carry on. In truth, if this was a battery, it would start to slowly slope down until it runs out of power over time. Now AC, or alternating current, is a completely different beast. You can see it has a waveform. The electricity changes direction from positive to negative, and it changes direction 50 times a second. This is its frequency, and this is where we get the 50 hertz being mentioned on many household items. So an inverter not only needs to change the voltage, it also needs to recreate this alternating current. Now this is an important point, and I'm gonna go through this with you in a few moments time. So why would you want a power inverter? Well, for some, you can turn up on site and you can plug straight into the electrical hookup and away you go. You've got yourself set up, you've got yourself mains voltage, you've got yourself your low voltage system as well, and everything is fine. But there is something of a movement of people that like to go completely off grid. And in fact, there are some sites that don't even offer electrical hookup. And for those occasions, a power inverter is an extremely handy device to have with you to give you some mains power on some devices that you may need to use. Now, how do you connect one up? Well, it's really straightforward. Let me show you. I was up at the caravan a few weeks ago and I used our inverter and I just connected a battery charger to it. Right, we're just about to plug the inverter onto the caravan, but before I show it to you working, let me give you a guided tour and show you some of the features that you get on a typical inverter. Okay, so this is our inverter here. It's a Bestec 1000 watt power inverter. And as I discussed, it's got an input of 12 volts and it outputs of AC 230 volts, 50 Hertz, uh, which I've already gone through with you. And typically what you'll find on every inverter is you'll find obviously a power outlet. This one has got a Euro capable fixture on it. So you can fit uh, European plugs into it as well. Obviously you've got a power on and off. This one's got illumination to show you that there's working okay or if there's a fault. On the other side, what we have here, uh, we have our DC input and these go off to uh, crocodile clips like this. Cooling fan in there as well, especially if it's working hard and creating a lot of current for you. And then this one here has got three fuses fused on the input, the output, and the third one, I think is also the output on this particular model as well. So there we go, that is the inverter. You're, this one's quite big, it's quite a lumpy unit as you can see. And we purchased this one from Amazon and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Okay, so connecting up couldn't be any simpler really. What we have on the inverter is the two croc clips. And what we're going to do is we're gonna connect them straight onto the battery terminals. Now our inverter is already fused. Uh, but if yours hasn't got a fuse built onto it, which is quite rare to be honest with you, then obviously put an inline fuse in with the main cabling. Um, don't be surprised if you see a little spark when you connect up for the first time, by the way. Uh, sometimes they spark just because they're drawing a bit of current when they first start up. So that's it now connected to the battery. Let's switch on the inverter. And then connect our battery charger. Little burst from the fans there, which is absolutely normal. 
and all I'm going to do now is plug in my camera battery charger, place my battery in, and as I can see there, I've got a flash of red light. I don't know if you can see that, but that's now telling me that my battery's charging, which means I've now got mains power here. And that's it, that's connecting up the inverter. It's pretty simple stuff, as I'm sure you'll agree. But before you rush out and purchase one, there's a few important things you need to consider before you make that purchase. So remember I discussed with you the inverter needs to recreate this waveform. That's an important point to remember. You see, for it to create this waveform and for it to change the voltage, the inverter itself will need to consume some power, which basically means a power inverter can be quite inefficient. It needs power to create power. So what does this actually mean in real world? Well, some of the cheaper models can be as low as 60% efficient. The more expensive models can be anywhere up to 80% efficient. So what this really means is, is if you have something that requires 100 watts of power, you'll need an inverter that can give you anywhere between 120 and 150 watts of power. Another important point to remember is that if the inverter is recreating a waveform that we've discussed, and it needs to consume power to create power, it also needs to recreate this waveform if nothing is plugged into it. So on some of the cheaper models that you can purchase, if there is nothing plugged into it and it's just left plugged into the battery, it will carry on consuming power and potentially it can flatten your battery. I had one a few years ago which did exactly that. I completely forgot about it and it flattened the battery for me and made the battery completely useless. Now on our blog, I've written up uh, examples of real world applications on how to use an inverter. It gives you some typical devices that you can run from an inverter and it shows you how long you can run that device for and what sort of power you would need and what sort of inverter you'd need to go and purchase. So it's well worth having a look at. Go to click up here and uh, go straight to our blog to have a read of that. So you would have seen exactly how I connected our inverter. I plugged it straight onto the battery outside of the caravan. In truth, it's not particularly practical, is it? Because, you know, what if it rains? It's just going to get wet. So the temptation here is to go inside and plug the inverter into a cigarette outlet. Well, a word of warning with this, many of the cigarette lighter outlets that you have in your caravan are rated for 6 amps, which translates to 72 watts. Now, our inverter, which I'll show you again in a moment, is rated at 1,000 watts. So if I plug anything of any significant power into it, it's going to do some serious damage to my caravan electrics. So the best practice when you connect an inverter into your caravan is to go straight from the battery on a dedicated cable straight to the inverter. Fit an inline fuse and an isolator switch as well so that you can disconnect it and isolate the inverter from the battery and only use the main sockets on the front of the inverter. Don't be tempted to try and wire it back into your mains feed. I have seen people try and use the 13 amp connectors to the EHU socket on the outside of the caravan, where you would basically go from the battery to the inverter, from the inverter back into the electrics in the caravan. Don't be tempted to do this. Your caravan has a battery charger on it, and by connecting the battery to the inverter, the inverter to the mains, which then goes back to the battery charger, you're creating an essential short circuit and you can cause yourself some damage. So don't be tempted to do that. Just use the socket on the front of the inverter if you need to run any mains electric power at all. So you've decided you want to purchase a power inverter and you know what there are many types shapes sizes configurations colors there are lots of them available on the market and it can be a little bit bewildering of which one to purchase so let me go through some basic steps of things to look out for when you're purchasing an inverter well let's start off with the power rating understand what it is you really need to run from your inverter it's no point saying i want the biggest inverter money can buy work out what you actually want to run from your inverter. So for many people, it would be things like a battery charger, maybe a laptop charger, could potentially even be a television. So look on the device, look for its power rating. It'll be written on there somewhere and it will be written with a power rating in watts. So for my laptop charger, 
it's 72 watts. We wanted a power inverter that could charge up my camera batteries, so the power consumption was very, very small. However, when I purchased the inverter, I purchased a 1000 watt inverter, completely over the top and completely beyond anything that I would need to use a 1000 watts for. But I bought a 1000 watt power inverter because it was the cheapest one on the market at that time. My recommendation for you is this, when you purchase your inverter, double the rating. So if you want to charge something at 100 watts, pick a 200 watt power inverter and then look for one above 200. In a lot of cases you can get a 250, maybe even 300 watt power inverter. The second point is the type of inverters. There are two main types of inverters on the market. And for me to demonstrate to you and show you the different types, we need to refer back to that diagram I created a few minutes ago. If you recall, I said earlier that inverters create a waveform, the alternating current. Well, this is called a sine wave. And a normal sine wave looks exactly like this. You can purchase inverters that have a pure sine wave, and these recreate a pure waveform, ideal for delicate equipment. For example, a laptop, or a delicate piece of equipment like a TV or a radio. The other, and much cheaper type, is known as a modified sine wave. It's cheaper because it's crude in the waveform it creates. In some cases, it's almost a square wave. It can cause interference on TVs, radios, and is not really recommended for delicate pieces of equipment. For us, however, though, we just needed a power inverter that could charge up my camera batteries, and we could also use when we're on the storage yard to charge up the vacuum. So a modified sine wave in this instance would be absolutely perfect. Now in the description below, I've listed a couple of models of inverters that I suggest you go and have a look at. Compare the two and you can see all the points which I've raised in this video. If you're unsure about any aspects of power inverters before you go and purchase one, hop along to your local caravan dealer, ask them the question and ask them what they would recommend. These guys do it all the time and any question you have for them, they will be able to help you with no doubt. I've tried to keep this video as non-technical as I possibly can. It's more an overview and information based video. There are a lot more technical uh, ins and outs of inverters I'm sure you can appreciate. Feel free to put a comment down below. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. And until the next one, guys, we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye now.